Well, hello, that's me again. Today is Saturday, it's July 13th, 2024. And let me start with something which is really important. And uh, people will be asking about it anyway. And I think so, this is extremely important. And I just did the podcast in Russian and people in Russia ask, what's the, what's the deal? Let me explain what's the deal. Uh, obviously it's speculation, but it's a very, very, uh, how to put it, uh, well justified speculation. Remember this? A couple days ago. So as you can see yourself, by Biden introduces Ukraine Zelensky as President Putin, and he calls Kamala Harris Vice President Trump. Uh, we know that Biden is done. He is not normal person. And you have to thank uh, people from Democratic Party who humiliated United States and destroyed its uh, whatever the remaining reputation by parading this basically walking carcass without, I mean, very angry, very perverted man. Uh, and so, yeah, he being old and having uh, suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia simultaneously, and nobody can d d deny it anymore. But then again, and they knew it. So which tells you everything you need to know about Hollywood and DNC that there are people there are immoral jerks who uh, basically destroyed the last uh, remnants, whatever was left of the American democracy, democracy being uh, quote unquote, and you can see yourself. So here's the guy. I mean, hey, you voted for him. I didn't live with that. The country, the United States, my country to which I became the citizen have been paraded as a circus, as a clown around the world. As a result, we have this. Mr. Belousov, like, uh, uh, and it's actually the uh, real news, it's a Russian uh, 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 very famous news agency. They, look at this. Uh, Belousov and Austin had a telephone conversation. Look how it was presented to it. The ministers of defense of Russia and the United States, Andrei Belousov and Lloyd Austin, held telephone conversation, the military department uh, of two uh, countries, uh, at the initiative of the Russian side. Look, Russians say, yeah, it was the initiative of the Russian side. A telephone conversation took place between the minister of defense of the Russian Federation, Andrei Belousov, and the secretary of defense of the United States, Lloyd Austin. The issue of preventing security threats and reducing the risk of possible escalation was discussed. The Russian Ministry of Defense said, in turn, in Pentagon noted that Austin pointed out uh, the importance of keeping channels of communications open in the context of the ongoing Ukrainian conflict. Well, it's all fine, and uh, we will discuss it uh, 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 slightly later. But you know why he called? He called precisely because, obviously, the whole world sees what America has become and what those people uh, elected. Everybody knew that even in uh, 2021, when Biden was taken office, he was absolutely already incapable uh, and, well, impaired man. So now he is just absolutely walking corpse, and these people continue to push this uh, whatever is left in there of this, he's a very bad man. He always was. I mean, but the point is, at, at, by now, it is the constant abuse of the senior citizen. And Belousov, and obviously uh, being the permanent member of the Russia Security Council, that means he talks to Putin, he talks to Medvedev, he talks to Lavrov, he talks to everybody who really matter in uh Russia Security Council, um, he kind of responded in kind because Mr. Austin called him last week and he calls him and most likely he said, you know what, Lloyd, uh, and yeah, I'm not saying this with the internet, uh, you know, uh, tone of Mr. Lo <laughs> Lloyd from The Shining, although we are kind of in The Shining, he said, Lloyd, you know what, uh, we have the situation here. You have obviously the person who is a complete imbecile and who has the, you know, the only national authority to deploy nuclear weapons. He has the access to the red button. We know this. We understand who this people, uh, who this person is. He is extremely angry man. He, because he always was, uh, basically, he knows that he is just not only a loser, he is just human trash. He probably, what he talks about, Putin and Trump are two people constantly on his mind. Because obviously, you know, he continue. I will talk about this. So Mr. Belousov most likely told him that make sure 
that this cretin doesn't push the red button because he can and uh, when you look at this these are people who voted for this you don't understand what they were uh, and they don't understand they have no clue they don't have the reference points they are highly uncultured people in washington generally are highly uncultured the fact that you have degree from some ivy league doesn't make you a cultured person washington is a young city with a very primitive uh, art uh, scene and you know so just yeah they are not sophisticated people they are very envious people and when you people t talking from some georgia or somewhere in mississippi for who is like some congressman uh, or senator from there they didn't see the world they don't know much about this most of them are local lawyers they moved up from all those positions got elected and there you are so you have those people who do not understand what is going on below of does austin for all his as Mr. McGregor calls him affirmative action uh, appointment, which he probably is, and for all his connections to Raytheon, he should understand. After all, he is a graduate of the West Point, no matter how, uh, you know, what uh, it deflated this title uh, is anymore. But he understands what is at stake. And at stake is that if some Mr. Biden gets up one morning and says, we deploy the nuclear weapons because Mr. Putin, as he called him, uh, this is now is his pastime. Uh, he insulted him. He thinks Mr. Putin, uh, the U.S. president, called uh, the Russian uh, leader a murderous madman at the NATO summit in Washington. So commenting on the NATO summit and Biden's remarks, Peskov stressed that the Kremlin says the U.S. president's behavior is absolutely unacceptable, impermissible for a head of state. The problem is he doesn't have head, Mr. Biden, and even their most uh, fanatic uh, lib, uh, whatever, I don't want to use these words anymore. Some, something like losers like Clooney, semi-literate, uh, uh, drop out from the journalist school, you no, know, the media school. Here it is. That's your intellectual and uh, educational level. And even donors now do not want to, uh, you know, what uh, uh, pay f to the DNC and pay for Biden's campaign. But you know what? You were the guys who were pushing him. Live with that. But obviously, uh, below South and Austin, we're talking about this issue of the red button. I am 99.99% sure about that. So take it with whatever you want, grain of salt, or maybe take it, in, you know, as a truth. But this is my point, and I think so. This is a very valid point. After that, the spokesperson of Pentagon, uh, her, her name Singh. Uh, she said, oh, yeah, you know what, we will allow Ukraine now to use the, you know, the, those attack arms inside deep into Russian territory. Okay, RIA News comes up with the map to demonstrate to you what it means. The uh, maximum range of the uh, attack arms is uh, 300 kilometers. As you can see yourself, this is what they were using before, allegedly, which is like 150 kilometers. But if they get that close to the uh, front line, so they, if it's a 300 kilometer range, yeah, they will continue to shoot at uh, Crimea, which is, you know, very well acquainted with this situation. So they will start shooting at Bryansk, Kursk, and Voronezh because uh, it's uh, American system. It's meant by Americans. The only good it can do as traditional for the Pentagon, kill civilians. That's what they do because they are essentially now turned into the terrorist force. And so, but yeah, this is what is going to happen. So now, okay, Russians will respond as they usually do. And uh, that was also discussed. But yeah, evidently Austin wants the, you know, if you listen to what Mrs. or Miss Singh uh, stated from speaking on behalf of Pentagon, that they can shoot deeper into Russian territory. Good luck. Russians will respond in kind. And again, uh, it's uh, pretty much a tradition, American tradition now to hide uh, behind the you know backs of the, the whatever proxies. So yeah, nothing new. But but this is why this whole thing is happening. And then of course we go to um, uh, the other thing which is um, CNN, yeah, it's a collection of sewer putrid smell from these people, comes up everywhere, they pull it out of their asses and say that uh, allegedly claims by CNN that Russia plotted to assassinate the CEO of Germany's Rhine metal arms manufacturer, Armin Paper. Uh, 
Berger, whatever, are based on anonymous sources and lack of any evidence, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov has said. The US media outlet have claimed that American intelligence services tipped off their German colleagues, thwarting their supposed plot. Uh, America doesn't have professional intelligence services anymore other than they are uh, actually doing this, yeah, spreading this crap uh, about it and trying to recruit people, but I don't think so they are aware of, of anything because as Larry Johnson, who is former CIA professional, obviously, he explained they don't like bad news in Langley. And so as a result, their real information about what is going on never gets there. So what they do, they create all those rumors and they feed them to these imbeciles, which are most of the American journals are, be that New York Times or Washington Post, and they create those stories, which of course is complete, you know, figment of fantasy figment, you know, uh, fiction. And the another thing which they don't even understand what they're dealing with, why would Russians want to kill the guy from Rain Metal? Okay, they kill him and well, they get the next one. So, yeah. No, Russians, if it comes down to it, that's the thing, you know, you, that's you're talking when you're talking about midgets, you know, in American media, in military and all that, that if it comes down to it, Russians will freaking bomb the goddamn, you know, Ryan Metal if it comes down to it. So there you go. Simple as that. Yet they continue to perpetuate this garbage, which they do it over and over again. And they are one trick ponies. They are not very, as I already stated, not very educated, don't know Russia. Mostly their intelligence is crap. And most of it is actually of this crap is actually made up rumors. And as you can see yourself, when you look attentively at how the America disintegrates in the front of our eyes, we, you look at this, the, uh, basically the uh, state institutions are ceasing to, uh, ceasing to, pardon me, what the hell, so they are not capable to function properly, so what can I say, you know, uh, this ungovernable country, and when you look at the president of this country, when you look at this uh, absolute manifest and how to put it politely, shocking incompetence across the board. Uh, do, do I have to remind you that Star, Starliner is still there in the International Space Station? They cannot get it back. And so this is just what America has become. The Boeing has been charged with the essentially, you know, what crime by Justice Department. So this is what this country has become. This is what happens when you uh, basically implement policies which forget about GOP. They are as corrupt as Democrats. But at least they do not want to impose on you things which completely destroy the country. They still will destroy it. It doesn't matter. Trump will win elections probably. You think so? He can do something? No. He cannot do anything. He can appoint whatever he wants, uh, whoever he wants, but it's not going to change the trajectory of the country. The problem is systemic. We are talking about the collapse, implosion of the culture as such. We are, uh, talking about the implosion of the all necessary professional human uh, connections between people which actually drive country ahead. And what is happening with the United States today, it basically runs on inertia. There are some institutes, state institutes, which still continue to operate because money continues to be paid there. They do something, they don't even understand what they are doing. And that's what is happening. You know, they say that, you know, the fish rots from the head. And there you go. This is your classic example. Did you see Biden administration? We all know there are all those po political science and lawyer boys and girls who uh, pet on children. You think so? Jake Sullivan knows what actual national security is with his degree in political science. You know, you think so that Blinken knows uh, anything about diplomacy other than the, uh, you know, covering up for Israel? That's your level. They are not going to be talked to by professionals because they are not professionals. Look at John, uh, the same Lloyd Austin. Look at Pentagon. My God. The United States have been exposed, all of its top-notch military have been exposed as fraud, it's basically junk. They want to uh, provide their one of more batteries or what's called battalions of uh, one billion dollar worth of a patriot to Ukraine and some F-16s. Good luck! And just to demonstrate to you what is happening and how it happens, it's, uh, you can take a look at the uh, uh, latest data from yesterday on, on 
uh, losses of the armed forces of Ukraine. As you can see yourself, yeah, we go back uh, at above 2,000 uh, a day. So each day, one brigade is removed from the order of battle. They will try to co conduct counteroffensive closer to the elections because th this is the only thing they know i mean pentagon doesn't operate on the base of the real plans the, everything is about who gets elected who stays in the bureaucratic position and who gets the money that's pretty much it they don't know how to fight so you have to, to uh, you, as you can see yourself you have nine tanks 46 armored vehicles 50 artillery and mortar 16 uavs two mlrs yet heimers have been killed that means what Guess from three types who mans those Heimers, okay? So, and one of the uh, 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 Sams have been uh, also destroyed. I believe this one was one of the lightest, uh, last remaining S 300s. So, as you can see yourself, a really interesting harvest happens every day there. And if you go, those who know, I will try to leave you uh, the. Uh, um, a link to my good friend Marat Hyrule, and he wrote an excellent piece about the weapons becoming the new oil, which is correct, you know, and how the uh, United States is not capable to actually have an answer to any kind of the military technological development right now. And I've been on record for, uh, on this for years. Now we can see it, and they are now complaining that, you know, Sentinel. Yeah, it's already twice more expensive than it was planned that this new strategic missile submarine or pardon me missile it's by the time they probably will be able to put it into IOC in initial operation capability it's going to be like three four times over budget so it's classic American weaponry business you know so military business so and then we have uh, Mr. You know Chas Freeman, the ambassador, the good old American diplomat. When Amer uh, United States had had diplomacy and had the thinkers of the uh, fairly large scale, he talks about uh, actually today about NATO summit, which where Mr. Uh, Biden uh, called Mr. Zelensky Mr. Putin, and obviously called Kamala Harris uh, Mr. Trump, and he talks about that the summit of retreat, global NATO is finished. Well, and he is talking about it that. Instead of strengthening the NATO alliance and showing its power, the latest summit in Washington did the opposite. It has laid bare its cracks, its failure to deal with reality, and its incapacity to respond to the unstoppable emergence of the multipolarity. It was a summit of retreat, and it will be remembered as the moment when NATO, instead of reinventing itself, doubled down with the same failed approach. That ultimately leads to its demise difficult to disagree we've been talking many of us about the situation and the question is uh, not just that uh, nato is military uh, incapable which it is mr barrel can uh, dream whatever he wants like from 150,000 to 300,000 troops sure so they don't even have proper data the uh, intelligence which is the cia provides and all those bnds uh, is garbage you know you look at these militaries they are pathetic so they're trying to now crawl out of this they created in Ukraine but it's too late you know it's uh, how to put it Russian proverb says that you know what was the talon single talon of a bird is stuck in the swamp the whole bird dies and this is what happens this is the result of the incompetence lack of culture most of those people are highly uncultured lack of the foresight lack of education lack of education and so we can go on and on and on and then of course you have the what is called leader of the so-called free world which is not free anymore mr biden who who knows we have to you know just hope that austin and belousov uh basically settled the issue that nobody will allow this uh, actually moron close to the red button but there you go so now we have the other situation obviously and uh uh, Shanghai uh, uh, Cooperation Organization. This is uh, obviously a huge organization which begins to emerge uh, together with the uh, together with the uh, uh, BRICS, 
And here, if you take a look at the Shanghai uh, Cooperation Organization, <clears throat> you can see yourself in its mission statement that uh, the goals of the SCO are to strengthen mutual trust, friendship, and good neighborliness between the member states. Uh, and member states today involve such countries as obviously the uh, Russia, you know, Belarus, uh, Kazakhstan, you know, and uh, Iran. So you know, there are all these big countries now. They're obviously, China goes without saying. So, and as you can see yourself, that uh, this is what was on the uh, uh, starting, so to speak, five. Now they is expanding. And look at this: what it states in the mission statement to jointly ensure and maintain peace, security, and stability in the region, and to promote a new democratic, fair, and rational international, political, and economic international order. It is international organization which is anti-NATO, if you wish, but in a completely different sta you know, uh, state, so to speak. And if you go back a few days ago with uh, Garland, Scott Ritter, and me talking about it, Scott gave excellent description of the S uh, uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and Turkey suddenly wants in. You see? Interfax reports. But Russia is, yeah, Turkey can become member of BRICS, but in terms of a Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is security organization primarily, which also is based on some very serious intelligence and military cooperation, uh, and especially maintaining the peace within the states. Here it is. In the situation with Turkey, possible accession to Shanghai Cooperation Organization, there are contradictions between its obligations as a member of NATO and the fundamental documents of the SCO, said the press secretary of the President of Russia, Dmitry Peskov. Indeed, we are aware of Turkey's intention to join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. There are certain contradictions related to the obligations and positions of Turkey as a member of NATO, the North Atlantic uh, uh, Alliance, and uh, with the worldview that is enshrined in the fundamental documents of the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Peskov said at a briefing. The, and they say that, yeah, we're going to talk. To, you know, to Turkey and Mr. You know, the best acrobat, geopolitical acrobat of the last decade, Mr. Erdogan, with a man with a very wide behind. He's capable to sit on several chairs. And hey, give him a uh, credit for where the credit is due. The guy is pretty good at it. So, but yeah, it's the end of the story, and he has to decide: Does he want to stay in NATO, or does he want to become the part of the security organization responsible for the largest combined economy? I mean, by far, in the world, and it's still emerging. And it's going to be the, it's global organization now. So his choice, obviously. I don't think so he is capable to make this choice now, but Turkey inevitably will be sucked in into this uh, orbit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization because at some point of time, economic interests and economic ties will weigh in. But in the end, let me tell you something which is even more important. I applaud it. I uh, finally, it's just absolutely marvelous that they did it. And this is especially, and it, uh, well, I don't know, I don't want to mention his name uh, directly, but uh, to some certain colonel, uh, very popular one from the United States Army, who continues to spread all those fairy tales and uh, rumors, which is garbage, completely garbage, uh, ahistorical, ascientific, uh, about uh, uh, Soviet Union, Red Army, and the role of the Soviet Union in World War II. So suddenly, RT reports uh, uh, yesterday, that is uh, absolutely magnificent. Miracle in the East, New World War II history book hits the shelves. What is important the, about this book? There are many books written about World War II. There even such losers like this uh, Sir, whatever, Anthony Beaver, who never even uh, have been to Podolsk and main archives of the Red Army. He wrote it all uh, from the German sources, quote unquote, which is, of course, fairy tales and confabulated BS about World War II. But here it is. Uh, the emphasis on a telling a consistent story because in the modern world the idea of the role of the Red Army and the Soviet people in the victory over fascism has been lost. Moreover, the entire history of World War II is being revised and distorted. People who worked on this book and published it talking about. If you read my first book, The Losing Military Supremacy, uh, 
it's half, if not more, of this book is about World War II. Because actually, America's post-World War II greatness is com completely tied to the Eastern Front. Not to the Western Front, to Eastern Front. Obviously, the United States fought brilliantly, and especially the U.S. Uh, Navy fought the uh, war in the Pacific. But America's fortune, as they existed till recently, now it's gone, uh, as a nation which, well, declared itself the he hegemon, hegemon, if you wish, uh, was uh, tied not to the Western Front. It was tied to the Eastern Front. And here it is. This is what is important about this book, which I strongly recommend to read, because it's not written by Russians. It is written by military correspondents from Great Britain and United States, such as Leland Stove, legendary Leland Stove, who was syndicated across the board in 1940s during World War II. And I have my Seattle Times uh, 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 newspapers from 1942 with his wonderful reporting from the Eastern Front. And so here is the book. It is called Mi uh, Miracle in the East. Western War Correspondents Report, 1941-1945. It is primarily about the Eastern Front and the truth they were writing uh, and uh, reporting then about the contribution, immense, decisive contribution of the Soviet people, Soviet Union and uh, uh, Red Army to the defeat of Nazi Germany and its uh, allies, including, by the way, which gives us very good understanding who participated in genocidal war against Russians. And here is the one of the pieces of this book, for example. And this is just shocker. Many people will not like it, but it's true. Russians knew it. But then again, listen, it's just, it's uh, basically useless to talk for, for primarily with most, not all, uh, American or British historians today, uh, because they don't even understand what they're dealing with. So as Leland Stove in the Evening Star, October 26, 1942, this is just one example. Stalingrad keeps 400 Nazi planes from African front. There were more than 400 Nazi plays, there were um, way more, but, and he asks the very good question, what would it have been like if Rommel had uh, about 400 more planes to put up against you? I ask casually. This chance shot, uh, shot netted a collection of unanimously knitted brows and a circle of suddenly serious faces. One of Lieutenant Colonel Frank Mears' operation staff officer, Major Archie Knight, obviously spoke for everyone present when he explained. 400 more German planes? Phew, I even hate to think of it. Do you think you'd be sitting out here in Libya with the Nazi digging in El Aguila if Rommel had several hundreds, uh, hundred more planes, I ask? Not on your life, not a chance. The answer came in a general chorus. They understood then. Problem today with all those, and again, there's certain colonel who will probably be occupying a very important position in the coming Trump administration. He continues to spew actually the complete BS drawn from the sources, which I read his latest book. It's, it's, it's horrible. Why people think that you can become military historian because you fought in the Gulf War is beyond me. But here it is. And this ties very well together, uh, together with what I was talking about, the uh, complete implosion of the American military education and cadre officers they produce. And when you look at this, this is the book. The time has come to show the, I mean, basically take their heads and, you know, place them squarely into this, you know, cake of the truth, because for them they cannot deny their own correspondence, people with the international repute, such as Leland Stove, among many. Obviously they never read the actually Molly Panther Downs famous London war notes when she spoke about what was the mood in London when Soviet Union fought Battle of Kursk. She wrote there that it was the feeling of like standing on the sidelines, seeing how your best friend was fighting to the death. And that's what it was. They forgot it. They forgot it deliberately. They rewrote the history. And as such, now they are surprised that they don't understand how they can fight, what the modern war is. Well, they had the wrong teachers to start with. And, but they never understood it. Because guess what? They stole a valor. But this is what I wanted to tell you uh, today about all that. And uh, as always, guys, those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. And those who can afford, please support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee too. And what can I say? Have a nice rest of the weekend and I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.